In 1989, there was a terrible earthquake in Armenia. It actually registered at 8.2 on the Richter scale, and it was so devastating. 30,000 people died in under four minutes. And as often happens after these terrible tragedies, um, that, that some way there, there's incredible stories of, of heroism. And, and I heard this story, I thought it was just so profound. And the story goes that near the epicenter, there, there was a small town and the earthquake happened in the morning and in the small town there was an elementary school. And so of course after the parents kind of gathered themselves and then the rubble had stopped falling, they, they ran to this elementary school to see if, if anybody had survived and it had been flattened. And, and so some people were screaming, some people were crying, but there was one man that looked at the building and his son was named Armand and he assessed the building and he looked where he thought his son's classroom would have been. He remembered going into the school when it was to the right. And, and so he starts to climb over this rubble towards where his son's classroom would have been and he starts to dig and he starts to pull rocks and concrete and wires out and the situation just seemed totally and completely hopeless and, and some of the other parents started saying to him what are you doing come down you're going to get hurt it's over there's there's no point nobody's going to be safe and, and the man just kept digging and kept digging and kept digging and eight hours went by and he kept digging, his hands began to, to be bloody, and he kept digging, and 12 hours go by, and, and 24 hours go by, and the police show up, and the police are, are trying to get him to stop, and he just keeps digging, and 34 hours go by, and finally in the 36th hour, he hears children's voices, and, and he cries down to where he heard them come from, and he yells, Armin, his son's name, and he hears, his son say, Dad, I know you'd come for me. I knew, I told all the kids that you would come for us. What had happened was that the building collapsed and it formed kind of a, a T and it saved all the kids underneath. He pulled his son and 13 other kids out of the earthquake that day, out of the rubble of the earthquake. And they asked him afterwards, what were you thinking, the reporters, what were you thinking when you were digging for your son in this hopeless situation? And he said, the only thing that was going through my mind was every morning I would bless my son's forehead when he was leaving and say to him, son, no matter what happens, I'll always be there for you. Mark chapter nine, second prediction of the passion. What God the Father has done is send his son into the mess, into the rubble. And, and unlike this father who, who lived and who rescued, that, that Jesus gives his life. But the idea is that we were in a hopeless situation, that there was no chance, that we were doomed, that everything else, everything else had given up on us, right? But the father's love for us is so strong that he doesn't give up. I want to say to you, uh, wherever you're at in your life and your faith journey, that you haven't been forgotten, that the only assurance you need you haven't been forgotten is Jesus's passion, is his going into the rubble, the mess, and the wreck to, to reach down and to pull you out. And so this is my challenge. This is my invitation. This is God's invitation. Hear your name being called and reach out your hand to your Father who comes to you in Jesus to pull you up to heal you and to save you.